Hey, it's Phoenix, back again with another Ultra Latest Releases. Today is Tuesday, June 6th, and uh, we have a short one this week. Um, starting off with Green Lantern number one by... F uh, okay, let me... Because it's not Philip, he's the backup. Uh, let me see, where, where did it say it? Uh, Jeremy Adams and Zermanico? So, yeah, Jeremy Adams, it's meant to be flipped, um, and Zermanico... And then it's Philip Kennedy Johnson and Montos um, doing the backup. Uh, the main book is with Hal Jordan going back to his roots, sort of. Or this time he's not going to be in space as much. I guess he's going to be grounded on Earth more. Which, it's funny because Green Lantern, maybe you want to see him more in space. But uh, I will say this, Jeremy Adams' writing is amazing. Um, it's fresh. Um, the artwork is amazing. Like, it's... Out of all the Don and DC books, I'm actually more excited for Green Lantern right now. Um, even on bigger Batman fan, and I'm trying to get into Superman more. Uh, but Green Lantern is a definite, <coughs> sorry, it's a definite pickup. Uh, the backup uh, is with, uh, um, oh my God, with John uh, and his. Uh, let me see, John Stewart. I mean, and all his. You know, he comes back to Earth, and uh, you find out. Uh, you find a lot of things, like it has Guy Gardner in space, like almost half dead, and some crazy stuff happens, <laughs> and uh, if you're a Green Lantern fan, pick this number one issue up. Uh, if you were a Flash fan, I was saying, by Jeremy Adams, um, I would try this as well, because his writing, if you like his writing there, I believe it's the same way, uh, you know, high caliber. So, next, uh, Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker number one. This is within the White Knight universe. Um, it's like a, uh, not time, but it spins out of, like, the main universe, and if you love that world, keep reading. It's a one-shot. Um, this is a Gotham Academy Massive Mystery number one. Uh, I believe these are all, like, the backups from Batman, it said, from, uh, I feel like Gotham Academy-related stuff. It was all the backups from Batman 119 and 121, so if you like that, uh, read that. Um, Danger Street number six by Tom King, Jorge Fornes. Uh, well, if you're enjoying, if you like New God stuff and these um, characters that were all from the 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 first issue specials that were like twelve books, um, I would keep reading Danger Street because it's it is a good book. It maybe it's hard to get into. Like some Tom King stuff might be hard to get into in regards to the the content maybe because not all just uh, mainline superheroes all the time, but. Uh, I would say it's it is a good read. It, it some like most Tom 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 King still starts slow for me, but that's on purpose because like it's a you know it's always a maxi series usually usually, and with that concept you know, it, you get the the feeling of how he works every issue and it, it's good usually the payoff by the end. So I would say read that and plus his cover is amazing. Um, the Salmon Universe Nightmare Country The Glass House. This is also by James Tyne the Fourth, and Lisandro Estheran, and Patricio Angel or Patricio. This is a, a sequel series, um, that were connected to the first six issues of Nightmare Country. This just came out this year compared to Nightmare Country, which was like last year, I think. So if you're loving that Sam and Universe stuff about the Corinthian and all that thing, uh, keep reading that. Because I've, I've been liking it. Uh, let's see. Now this is amazing. Warlord number one by Mike Grell. I would say definitely read this. Warlord is a very interesting character that I bet no one even knows about now. Since, as you can tell, the first issue was 1975. And uh, Mike Grell, you know, famous for his Green Arrow run as well. The only Warlord issues, if I recall, are the Legends uh, tie-ins. Um, number 114, 115. So to have number one, hopefully it's a good indication that they're willing to add the issues in week by week. Hopefully. You never know. Um, but I would say definitely read. It's one of the classics. Uh, let's see. Blue Beetle number one by Steve Ditko. Another classic. Well, who knows? If you're a big Blue Beetle fan, but especially the, 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 the original version, or under DC at least, by Steve Ditko, because it's a Charleston character, um... If you love Steve Ditko, because he's a very interesting guy. It's funny seeing him write stuff, because I only knew him, of course, from uh, Spider-Man, which I love that. Uh, 
But yeah, Blue Beetle. Just show you some pages. It's funny because even though it says this is uh, 67 or something, it feels as though it came out like uh, during the uh, JLI run. <laughs> that's how good it was from the, from the get-go, I believe. So I truly think that's a marvel or a testament, you know, to the great Steve Dicko. Um, DC Challenge number one. Mark Evanier and Gene Colin. Let's see. What book is this? Let's see here. Can you solve it before we do it? Never. Uh, I guess it's like a challenge book. 12 issue round robin story. Okay, that's what it was. One of those round robin stories. I would say give it a chance. I didn't even know they did them back then. Uh, Superman Lost number three. Pass for me. Just not into it. Uh, Batman Incorporated number eight. Haven't been reading it. Just not into that either. Um, it's hard to venture out lately. Because the Dawn of DC stuff, immediately I'm hooked on. Batman the Adventures continues season three. Number five. Paul Dini and Ty Templeton. Um, I would say read it. Especially if you're just the biggest, you know, animated fan of the, the show. I mean, everything's been good. And it's Paul Dini, the guy who wrote stuff um, for the show. Wildcast number seven. Um, I would, uh, if you're reading it, keep reading it, of course. But um, I don't know. It. Uh, I would always advise, if you want to get into Wildstorm stuff, try the, the original stuff before the DC integration and go from there and see if you still like those characters. The Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number eight. Have read one issue. Probably not for me, but I'm happy they just still do this stuff, though. Uh, Green Arrow number 29. Um, Mike Grell and Dan Jurgens. Uh, oh, Dan Jurgens, okay. And then The Brave and the Bold, number 68, which has Metamorpho, and The Bat Hulk, which I believe was a scientific like experiment or something. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I think he said something like, yeah, Blue Blade. <laughs> I love this stuff. You guys should read this. This is fun. Fun times at DC. <laughs> uh, so overall, not the worst week, actually. A lot of it I will recommend, including Green Lantern number one, Danger Street number six, Same Man Universe, Warlord number one especially, and Blue Beetle number one. And I would also recommend Green Arrow number 29 and 68 of The Brave and the Bold because uh, both are classics different eras of course 30 years apart roughly um but yeah this is, a, this is actually not the worst week and books that most people maybe not know um younger older fans that might not have read these books now can read them and yeah um i'll see you guys next week uh, for another ultra release releases uh have a good one